Throw away the spreadsheets, the complicated calculators, and the expensive software. You don't need them to calculate if a rental property is profitable. In this video, I'll teach you the four rules I use to tell if a rental property is profitable or not. You should be able to do these calculations in under a minute using the calculator on your phone. Stick around until the end of the video where I'll share a hack you can use to negotiate a property purchase using these rules. Hey, what's up? Darren Voros here. My mission is to help you reduce your real estate investing education time from months to minutes, subscribe not to miss what's coming. You might be wondering why it's important to know if a property is going to be profitable. You're seeing it in the market right now. Interest rates are starting to rise. The real estate market is softening a bit and novice investors are beginning to panic. Why is that? Because they don't have positive cash flow on their properties. They may have purchased a property and they were relying on the market going up to make their money. These are called real estate speculators, not real estate investors. Real estate investors plan for these scenarios and put themselves in a position where they have cash flow so that they can sustain during an interest rate hike or when property values decline. So if you wanna be an investor, not a speculator, it's important to know how to quickly analyze properties to know if they will be profitable or not. That way you can focus your time on the properties that have potential versus the ones that are a waste of your time. Here's the four rules I use when quickly analyzing properties. The 1% rule. This is probably the most widely used rule in real estate because of its ease and speed. This rule states that if a rental property's monthly income is equal to or greater than 1% of the purchase price, this property will most likely have positive cash flow. So to give you an example, if a rental property is generating $2,000 a month in rental income and the purchase price is equal to or less than $200,000, this property will most likely have positive cash flow. In other words, make an offer. A conditional offer, of course, until you can do a proper analysis, but there's a good chance the property will have cash flow. Properties that meet the 1% rule are becoming more and more rare, so if you find one, you will need to act quickly. The second rule is called the 0.7% rule. This rule is often used to give us our maximum allowable offer for a property to break even. Let's use the same numbers we used in the first example. If a property generates $2,000 a month in rental income, we can use the 0.7% rule to find out what we should be paying for this property in order for it to break even. So you take $2,000 and you divide it by 0.7%, which is 0.007, and this tells me that at $285,714.29, this property will most likely be cash flow neutral. We can also reverse engineer this. If a property is on the market for $275,000 and we know that it generates $2,000 a month in rental income, we can take the $275,000 and multiply that by 0.7%, and this will tell me that at $1,925, a month, this property might break even. If the rent being collected on the property was $1,200 a month and there isn't an opportunity to raise the rent, there's not much point in spending time on this property as it most likely won't work move on to the next property. The third rule is the 50% rule. This rule states that on average, the expenses of a rental property will equal 50% of the rental income. This 50% does not include the mortgage payment. So if the property is generating $2,000 a month in rent, if you're calculating your numbers properly, it will most likely have about $1,000 of expenses a month. If you're not sure how to run your numbers properly on a rental property, check out this video right here after you're done with this video. So now, if we know that we have $1,000 of expenses, and $1,000 left over, how can we quickly tell if we have positive cash flow after our mortgage payment? This fourth quick calculator that I use is to figure out how much your mortgage payment will be. Let's use the same numbers. On a $275,000 property, let's assume that we're going to be putting a standard 20% down payment on the property. So I take the $275,000 and I multiply that by 0.8, which gives me the mortgage amount at $220,000. The quick mortgage calculator rule says that for every $100,000 of mortgage, that is equal to a approximately $500 a month in principal and interest payments at today's interest rates. So on a $220,000 mortgage, we know that our mortgage payment will be about $1,100 a month. So if we combine that with the 50% rule for expenses, we know that this property will most likely be in negative cash flow or in a best case scenario, be cash flow neutral. You can see by using these four very quick calculators how we can tell if a rental property is going to be profitable. These can never be used to replace actually running your numbers and doing your due diligence, but they can be very helpful for some quick and dirty analysis. 
As promised, I wanted to share a hack with you that I use when making offers using these rules. A seller is much more willing to negotiate if I make them an offer with a very detailed number. If you got an offer for $285,714.29, you would most likely make the assumption that you're either dealing with a psychopath or someone who has a very specific number in mind for the property. You can use this to your advantage and state that this is the number that makes sense for you as an investor and anything beyond that is not going to work. It puts you in the driver's seat in terms of negotiations and cuts out a lot of the back and forth. Remember, you're an investor. This is not an emotional purchase. This is based on numbers. So if the numbers don't work, just walk away. There are always other properties available. Now I'd love to hear from you. Are there any other quick calculations you use when analyzing properties? Leave those in the comments section below along with any of your real estate investing related questions for me. If you want to learn more about how we use these calculators and how we analyze deals and how we find off market opportunities, check out my masterclass at darrenvoros.com. You can also follow me on Facebook and Instagram where I post regularly. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on Tuesday.